Why is Om used everywhere? What is the significance? The significance of Om is actually very, very vast and can be looked at from a lot of different levels. But for right here, for right now, we'll, we'll go into a piece of it. Om is the sound of the universe. And so when you meditate, when you do in-depth pranayama, when you go deeply within, when the sounds of the outer world become still. It's not into a place of emptiness. You know, Puja Swamiji observes a lot of silence. He used to do it for years on end and months on end. And now, rather than doing it like that because of so many programs and projects and so much seva that he does, he brings it into his, his day. And so there's silence from 10 at night to 10 in the morning, silence in the afternoons. But I mention this because one of the things that he always shares when people ask about why silence is silence is not the absence of sound. It's not a negative space of, okay, here there was sound, you remove the sound, now you have silence. Any more than peace is just the absence of conflict or war. You could stop conflict and war. Doesn't mean you're going to have peace. Peace is something much deeper. Silence is something much deeper than just the absence of outer sound. Now, absence of outer sound is a prerequisite for it, just like stopping killing each other is a prerequisite for peace, but it's not the highest that we go. And when you stop the outer sounds and you go into a place of stillness, if you're quiet enough, there is a sound, and the sound is the sound of a home. It's said that this is actually the sound out of which all else was born. And in fact, when you look at the, because it's not, we write it frequently O-M, but it's actually A-U-M. Um, it's actually a u m. It's actually three separate sounds, and those three sounds are referred to actually as the three elements of the divine. So we have the creator, we have the sustainer, we have the dissolver, destroyer, and that those three elements include the three aspects of the divine, and so in the sound of Om is the presence of all three elements of the divine. In the a u m, you have G O D, generator, operator, dissolver, or destroyer. So this is this is the the base for it. But it also is just a very, a very auspicious and, and beautiful sound for people. See, within the Hindu tradition, there's an almost infinite number of different paths and lineages. 
And so you'll find people worshiping the divine in the form of Krishna and people worshiping the divine in the form of Shiva and people worshiping the divine in the form of the divine mother and on and on into many, many different possibilities. But there's also lineages where they don't worship the divine in form at all. Still within the Hindu or Sanatan Dharm traditions. And in many of them, what they worship is Om. Not a symbol as God. It's not just a symbol of Om instead of an image of Krishna or instead of an image of Shiva or Ram. But it's a nameless, formless, divine presence. Much more like something you would find in a Judeo-Christian tradition. And yet, in that, in that it doesn't take form, in that puja is not done to it, there's no idols. And that divine is worshipped through the symbol of the sound. As I've mentioned in here frequently, the Hindu tradition is the only tradition I know of that actually has an entire scripture dedicated to sound. There are traditions and lineages rooted in the name of God as the divine. When we say Sat Nam, the name is the truth. And it's not one name. It's not that if that's your tradition, you fight each other to determine which name it is that's true. And yet, if we chose any of the names, inevitably there would be people who would say, oh wait, that's not, that's not the name that works best for me. So when we speak about the name, it frequently is the sound. We use the word name, but it actually is more the sound. The sound is truth. And so Om is that embodiment of the sound, which is truth. And lastly, and again, this is a really, really wide topic, but just lastly for tonight, as we know, sound is energy. Sound is not just something that we hear and we dance along or sing along or bop along or we like it or we don't like it. Sound is actually energy. It's literal vibrations that don't stop vibrating just because they've hit our tympanic membrane in the ear. They vibrate all the way through it. That's what allows us to hear and to know what people are saying. I mean, literally, you are quote unquote hearing what I'm saying due to vibrations, first on the outer ear and then ultimately as it moves into the inner ear along little, little, little microscopic hairs and how those hairs vibrate, whether it's a long frequency or a short frequency. And that gets translated into this brilliant, inconceivably genius contraption called a brain that the universe has given us that somehow takes waves and turns them into words. But they're energy. What goes in is energy. What impacts us is energy. You know that very acutely when you sit in places where there's a lot of bass. We had a beautiful performance during our international yoga festival by Shiva Maniji, who's the world famous percussionist. And you sit on your couch and you literally vibrate. I mean, he's playing a good 50 feet from you. The speakers are a good 20, 30 feet from you. 
But literally, you're not just hearing it in your ears, the body is literally vibrating. If you doubt this, sit somewhere and turn on the radio really loud where there's a you know, good rock song going on that's got a lot of bass. You feel it in the body. And this is important because when we say that OM is the sound of the universe, it's also therefore the energy of the universe. And so when we drop into it, we chant it loudly, softly, internally, externally, we're literally connecting with the vibration of the universe, the energy of the universe, which is why it's so powerful.